AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Toyota is going to expand the Prius line. Opel's boss says suppliers now have more power than automakers. And we look at the most unlikely electric car in the world, an EV version of the Trapant. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, September 17, 2009, and now the news. According to the Wall Street Journal, Toyota's planning a billion-dollar marketing push in the fourth quarter in the American market. The strategy was formulated in part by Akio Toyota himself and aims to invigorate the company's sagging North American operations. A billion dollars is a huge amount of money for an automaker to spend in a quarter, and for Toyota, it's about 30 to 40 percent more than normal. And in other big T news, the company is thinking about expanding its hybrid offerings by making the Prius a separate sub-brand. There's a lot of equity in that name, and Toyota could really cash in on its green cred by offering a wider range of dedicated hybrid vehicles. Hey, fascinating report from Reuters regarding Carl Peter Forster, who runs Opel. He says car companies have outsourced too much to suppliers to the point that the balance of power has shifted in the industry. Now suppliers are in control, Forrester says, because automakers no longer have the capability to develop key technology. The theory was that automakers only had to do design, marketing, and final assembly. He says with electric cars, automakers need to pull more development back in-house. And I'm sure I don't have to remind you that Forrester runs Opel, which is being bought by Magna, the giant supplier. Nissan says Thailand will become its main hub for producing pickup trucks sold outside of North America. According to Wards, this will not affect production in North America. Currently, Nissan is operating at 50% capacity in Thailand due to low exports and demand. Thailand has become the second largest pickup producer in the world behind the U.S. thanks to tax breaks for pickup makers. Chrysler is set to resume leasing again. The company will offer leases for all of its 2010 models starting today through GMAC Financial and will offer special rates on select vehicles through the end of the month. You know, about 20% of Chrysler's customers will only lease, so it's imperative it gets back in the leasing business. Formula One is as much of a soap opera as it is a racing series. Now the two team leaders of the Renault team Flavio Briatore and Pat Simons have resigned under allegations they had one of the race drivers, Nelson Piquet, deliberately crash his car in last year's Grand Prix of Singapore. The crash allowed his teammate, Fernando Alonso, to win the race. Piquet's crash happened just as Alonso was getting ready to make a pit stop, so he was able to pit before the pits were closed, which put the rest of the field behind him. And now Renault may sue the two guys who used to run its F1 team. You know, some cars should just be left in the history books, like the Edsel, the Gremlin, and the Cimarron. But common sense is not stopping two companies who are reviving an old East German favorite, but with a twist. The retro-looking Trabant NT debuted at Frankfurt yesterday. Unlike the original version that sported a weak two-stroke engine and plumes of acrid smoke, The new Trabi is all electric. Its Lion battery should deliver a range of about 160 kilometers, or roughly 100 miles. Speaking of EVs, how are we going to charge them all up? Well, up next, we'll talk to a company that has breakthrough technology for charging electric cars. Changing tires out here could be dangerous. But with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. We all know that several automakers are coming out with advanced electric vehicles, and we all know that EVs have their share of benefits, but there's at least one issue that could short circuit the whole electric movement, and that is charging technology. In the following interview, I sit down with Kristen Helsel from Aerovironment. She tells me about some of the company's charging systems. 
We are a technology company who's been fast charging things for 20 years. So we sort of like to say that, you know, we've been 20 years waiting for this moment to come back and, and for EVs to be popular again. So, uh, yeah, one of the things that we do is enable the practical adoption of electric vehicles uh, through charging uh, stations on road. So those will be the chargers that are at your house, the chargers that are at work, the chargers at shopping malls, the chargers maybe in gas stations. So that's the kind of product that we make. And that's where they've got to go, right? Gas stations and other parts of today's infrastructure. Yeah, we feel very strongly that we don't need to build alternate buildings for alternate fuels. You know, maybe one good place would be gas stations or maybe one another place would be in front of a shopping mall or a retail outlet. But we don't need to build new facilities to charge. We just need to put the chargers and make them available to people so that you have confidence when you buy your electric vehicle that no matter where you go, you're going to be able to charge. You know, and that will help uh, people feel confident in buying EVs. If you want to see the rest of my interview with Kristen Helsel, swing over to the John's Journal page of our website at autolinedaily.com. There you can watch our entire conversation, plus a whole lot more. Check it out. And don't forget to join us tonight for Autoline After Hours. Join me, Peter DeLorenzo from Auto Extremist, and David Welch from Business Week for some candid talk about what's going on in the auto industry this week. That's tonight, live at 7 p.m. Eastern. And that wraps up this show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tonight and tomorrow.